Second thing, laser structuring. Well, what, what are the main needs? You need an excellent linearity and precision. You need to have narrow scribe lines, and you need to have a reliable, stable platform. Now, what are results? You can optimize this up to a 250 micrometer area loss. And that's actually the, the loss you have if you go from a record cell or from a cell to an aperture efficiency. That's the loss you have between the three lines. Now, as narrow as you can go, as better it is. Now, the second question is, of course, the throughput. So if you have one laser doing this line, you have a certain throughput. If you have a multiple laser concept, you can actually uh, increase the throughput. So that's the second thing we introduced, a multiple beam concept. And important, from our point of view, we have more than 20, system, 20 systems already today in production, producing on full-scale thin film silicon models. The third equipment, that's the absorber. Now there we have also a bit of a different approach than a lot of other companies. We actually introduced 40 megahertz technology. And the reason why we did that is that uh, over the years in development, it has been always proven that if you go to higher frequency, you're able to get high quality material at high deposition rates. Now this is important. At low deposition rates, you can get high quality cells. You can even go to high deposition rates, but then you lose in efficiency, particularly on the stabilized efficiency. Now 40 megahertz allows us to combine both. The second factor is 28 square meter of uh, deposition area. So we were able to deposit 28 square meters of glass at the same time. To give you an idea, an LCD generation 8 equipment has 28 square meter of reactor surface area. We do a single chamber approach, so the whole PIN junction is done in one single process chamber, and we have an in-situ cleaning step. So after every deposition, we do a cleaning step. So we start with a brand new cleaned deposition chamber after every run. Now, why is that interesting? Um, by doing PIN in the same chamber, you can optimize PIN at any time for throughput and for performance. If you, for example, for microcrystalline particular, you have a really thin P layer and a really thick absorber layer, the mismatch of P to I will be relatively big. So you always have to have to optimize all different chambers if you have independent ones to optimize the throughput. Here, whenever you get a second, you get it on the throughput. And the second point is, if talking about PAN junction, it's always the concern, well, do you have boron contamination? And we have, we have been able to prove best-in-class modules using a PAN step in one single chamber. Another throwback normally are people saying, OK, 40 megahertz, there is a st uh, standing wave effect. Now, we have overcome that issue. We are able to get uniformity, thickness uniformity in the area of 10%, and I would call that it's quite state of the art. But in addition, we have been able to improve not only the thickness uniformity, but as well the crystallinity uniformity. And this is a bit of a different ballgame, particularly for microcrystalline technology. You need to be able to deposit in the transition phase. This is a highly sensitive area where you need to have really uniform deposition, not only, not only for the thickness, but as well on how it's growing. And that these uh, parameters are highly sensitive to temperature, to electrical field, to gas to gas percentage. So that is or was really key to get into the micromorph technology. Now, two things why we are convinced that uh, this is working, as we are saying, is that's a module presented last year at the European PVSEC in Milano. It's a 128 watt module or 9.6% conversion efficiency on aperture area. That's a single junction device with 3.5 angstrom per second deposition rate. And I will call that the best in class single junction module on full size in a commercial reactor. That this kind of modules are also working out or is showing on this picture. That's actually an installation we just done on our site in uh, Switzerland. So these are actually modules done by us, but as well there are some modules on there already produced by our customers. And they're delivering such kind of modules into the market since uh, this year, already started last year. OK, some few words on end-to-end -end manufacturing solutions. I just talked about TCO, laser, PCVD, so the main equipments to get such a device. Of course, if you really want to have everything running, just producing modules, you need to have, in addition, cleaning, line automation. You need to have a contact 
test the device and you need to encapsulate and laminate it. So when we are talking about end-to-end -end solution, we're really taking over responsibility for the whole package. And this is the part where I ended. Normally in semiconductor industry, a lot of time you stop with this system is tested and qualified. The customer is starting to do a, a process development. Here we actually go one step further and we offer a service, a process integration service. So we really take, we give a commitment to our customer to get them up and running to certain module performance. And then we support him in the production ramp up phase to really get him started as fast as possible. So we have an engineering team on site after testing and qualifying, really helping uh, getting kilowatts per week out of the production line. And during this time, there are a lot of fab optimization activities that we are working on, like process updates, yield improvements, uptime improvements, tag time improvements, as well as module power tuning. How could look, can, can that look like from a contracted perspective? So we really go a step further and take ourselves into responsibility together with our customers and say, OK, we have a certain fab output in kilowatts per week. And we have to reach certain ramp up milestones. And we have an engineering team on site. We got to deliver that performance together with our customer. And while we are ramping up, we take our people out. And our customers are able to take over as they can uh, over the production line and getting it fully, fully ramped up. Coming to the conclusions. Earlycon has successfully transferred R&D results into mass production. And I would add, we are continuing to do so. First customers of us actually delivered already in 2007, certified modules into the market. So they are installed already since 07 and going forward quite a bit. With a proven, and that is clearly, these production lines are, are in production. With a proven end-to-end -end production solution, we really are able to uh, deliver fast time to money. So it allows you really to get positive cash flow and we are still in the responsibility. Our customers from Micromorph Tandem are going into production this year. We are still on track on achieving grid parity and I think to be it a bit more concrete, our clear commitment is achieving 54 euro cents per watt ping for thin film silicon module in 2010. I would say that's a quite strong commitment. It's a lot of work and it will not be only us. It will be the material supplier. It will be our customer. But we truly believe that is possible and needs to be done. And we, we clearly see ourselves still on track to execute that one. Thank you very much for your attention. To give you an idea, that's just one picture of a production line. So it's really reality. It's here and it's now. I even have to say it's already old because it's picture done in last year. So there are quite a lot of such fabs already ramping up and starting to produce. Thank you very much.